So if you didn't catch the video on Tuesday that went over all of the, you know, mechanics of Troy and the Menelaus campaign, then you might want to go watch that first, because this video is just basically going to talk about the Paris campaign, since it's a separate embargo, because of creative assembly reasons that I can't really tell you, to be honest. So uh, yeah, this is the Paris campaign, let's get into it. Uh, I'd just like to say one more time that this is a early access build, CA gave me access to this build for free, they didn't pay me to do anything, they didn't pay me to say anything, so all these opinions are my own, and I'm not being bought out by anyone, so... You know, don't, don't say that because it's it's stupid. Why, why would they bother to do that? But I have like nearly 12,000 subs at the time of recording. I don't really think they're gonna bother to buy me out. So, okay. Maybe when I get a little bit bigger, hey, you never know, they might then. It's also worth knowing that this, as I mentioned, is early access. So, you know, if some things are a little bit wacky, some things don't look right, don't play right, don't sound right, don't feel right, it could just be because it's in early access, it's the development build. Things could change prior to the release on the 12th of August. Yes, I actually looked it up for this video. Aren't I great? So yes. Don't take everything in this video as fact, just take it as a general idea of what the game might be like when they actually release it, because I can't imagine them going to change too much. I mean, it's only like, it's like three weeks away at this point, they ain't got much time. Also, I completely forgot, I wasn't allowed to show the walled siege in the previous video, because uh, I got the footage from the Paris campaign and you're not allowed to do that. So here it is, here's a walled siege. Uh, as you can see, there's several different walls, it doesn't go all the way around, but it goes enough, at least in this specific settlement. And uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty alright, it was very difficult, you know, the, the walls are extremely powerful, uh, nothing like Warhammer where you don't want to defend the walls. I feel like you really want to defend the walls because they kept firing and they were absolutely slaughtering my units. It was very difficult and the maps are nice and big. It's not just like, you know, in Warhammer 2 where it's just a wall and then a control point. There was plenty to do. It was plenty difficult. So uh, yeah, that should be fun. You know, wall settlements are back, baby. Not too bad indeed. So, you know, for those of you that care about that, there you go. Sorry, I couldn't put it in the one on Tuesday. It's just how it works. I do apologize. I'm very bad. So Paris is the kind of antagonist to the Menelaus campaign. You know, he is Paris of Troy. His father is Priam of Troy and his brother is Hector of Troy. They've got this whole Troy trifecta and basically Paris cooked Menelaus, took away his wife. Helen kind of fell in love with him because, you know, who wouldn't fall in love with Orlando Bloom? And is it just a quint? Is it just me? Because, you know, Paris was played by Orlando Bloom in the film and this guy... It kind of looks like Orlando Bloom, so uh, I think they may have gone intentional for that, but either way, it's uh, it's frightening. So in playing of Paris of Troy, you of course have some unique faction mechanics that, you know, no one else in the game has access to, as far as I know. Uh, his first one is Priam's Heir, and what this basically means is how much your dad likes you, which uh, I'm sure we can all relate to. Now, what this basically means is you have to fulfill tasks to make Priam, your father, like you and give you more favor. You can do so many different things, have happy provinces that make lots of food, uh, get favor with the correct gods, the gods he's asking you to get favor with, complete epic missions, assist your brother in war, defeat the Greeks in battle, gifting gold to Troy, and we need to be specific about this one because you can't gift it in a treaty. Say you want like a military alliance and you give him some gold, that doesn't count, you need to just gift it and that's it, and you need to give them quite a lot, so this is going to be quite difficult to manage with all these things, but basically, doing anything in the campaign, you're generally going to get a little bit. Now, each tier of benevolence grants you bonuses, and you are competing with your brother, so whoever gets these bonuses first is going to get them, and the other one will get nothing. And these bonuses are gained at 100, 200, and 300 favour, and the max benevolence or favour you can get is 400. And once you gain max benevolence, you confederate him and your father and gain the city of Troy and all of Hector's lands and all of his armies and everything. So if you can manage to get on top of this, you're going to just rapidly become, at some point in the game, just a ridiculous powerhouse because you're going to have the power of three factions suddenly in one. And uh, it doesn't look like Menelaus is going to have much of a chance there. The only stipulation of this that you really have to pay attention to and really have to make sure that you do in order to win the campaign as well. First of all, you have to beat your brother, otherwise you confederate out of the game and that's very sad. But you also cannot let Troy fall to anyone else. If Troy falls into enemy hands, then I'm pretty sure you lose the game and uh, it's not very good. Priam is not happy with that and uh, I think he'll probably lose all the favour and the game. So yeah, don't, don't let that happen. That's very bad. The other feature that Paris has access to is Helen, my love, because he's such a little whiny baby that uh, when he's away from Helen, he gets all sad and his army suffers. So this means that you can move Helen between your settlements and you can do this a couple of different ways. You can host a grand feast, which can be done in any settlement that you own in the game. This costs a little bit of food, but if you build Helen's gardens, then it costs nothing, but you have to build the building. So, you know, it's kind of a trade off there. Do you want to spend some water or some food? Doing so grants 75 growth and 10 influence, both locally and in adjacent provinces. So, you know, if you're having a little bit of struggle taking over a region fully with your influence, then move Helen over there. And as long as she's happy, 
then you know you can get more influence and who doesn't like that you can also do a demonstration of skill this needs any military recruitment building to be built and it costs food and bronze it grants minus 20 percent recruit cost to all army units in the local region and plus 700 xp per turn to all local units finally you can also pull her over to gatherings for prayers these require a temple building to be built in the settlement they cost food and they grant happiness and plus 50 percent favor from priestess abilities so basically when helen and paris are near to each other and they don't need to be like sat in the same settlement that's a bit too much but when they're in the same you know region province whatever you want to call it they become happy and this benefits the population and Paris's army well you know Paris's army has high morale it's just they perform better in pretty much every conceivable way but just a little bit so it's not too overpowered and the faction as a whole in fact feels the happiness you get bonuses to happiness bonuses to influence bonuses to growth bonuses to pretty much everything so you want Helen and Paris to be happy as much as you possibly can yes they're a little bit whiny a little bit needy because after like three turns, they go down a tier to like gloomy. So when Helen and Paris are feeling gloomy, of course, Paris's army isn't going to perform quite as well as it was. And the settlement that Helen's in is going to suffer minus six happiness, but this is just locally. Now, if you let them stay apart even longer than that, Helen is going to become lonely and so is Paris. Paris's army is going to actively perform much worse. So you cannot really let this happen. And the entire faction will suffer minus 10 happiness faction wide. So that's pretty crazy. You really need to focus on this. Keep her moving around. Yes, it costs resources, but if you can stay on top of all these things, bonuses that you're going to get are going to well outweigh the negatives and the risk of this. So I feel like Paris is going to be one of those factions where you've all this stuff that's pulling you down, but if you can keep on top of it, you're going to be just absolutely soaring ahead and doing so, so well, but it is a lot to manage. Now, if Helen is in a settlement that gets taken, she gets stolen away from you and you need to get her back as soon as possible because you get massive debuffs until she's returned. And yes, this is kind of like, you know, hitting you when you're down because you know Helen's already gone the faction is suffering and the longer it goes on the worse you're going to feel and you all this time you have to try and get her back so you need to be actively pursuing and progressing to get her back but you've been debuffed the entire time so if you can at all help it make sure she doesn't get stolen because it's a massive pain in the ass to fix but if she does get stolen get her back as soon as possible because oh boy the faction's going to suffer and if you're wondering why I have no background yeah this wall got painted it's now white uh, we're going to be moving stuff around the, the con post is still here I promise uh, but, but bear with me, we are redecorating, so it's it's very blank right now. I'll just, I, I could just Photoshop something there, but it's too much effort, you know? I can't bother with that. Now, as for the play style of Troy, you know, whereas Menelaus was quite, you know, spear focused and he was very, you know, tough front line and that was it. Paris is much more ranged focus. So his range units will be pretty much some of the best range units you can get in the entire game. And they're going to be doing the majority of your killing for you. Your front line is really just there to slow down the enemy, be very defensive. They are okay, but... They are more focused on holding the line and being defensive and letting the range units do all the killing than actually being high damage units themselves. Now, as I mentioned in the Menelaus video, each faction can't recruit every single type of hero or lord, you know, we're still, I'm still trying to figure that out. It's very confusing to me. But the only type of hero that these guys can't recruit is warlords. So you can still get archers, fighters and protectors just not warlords. Now for their unique units, first of all, they have the Champions of Troy, which are spear infantry with a short range weapon to fire before combat hits. They have excellent defense with 100 armor and 64 melee defense, so will stick around pretty much forever. Uh, they have decent range damage and good melee damage and incredibly heavy armor, which makes them kind of slow, but you know, if they're gonna be that tough, it doesn't really matter how fast they get there anyway, because they're not going to take any damage. They also have Trojan Noble Chariots, which are a bow chariot unit. They are very fast and do good missile damage, but not much AP missile damage. They can also be used in melee with good weapon damage and charge bonus, and can fire in any direction and on the move, so great for flanking around the enemy to do so. Uh, these are basically just, you know, your standard chariot ranged unit. Uh, so you're going to want to use them as such, you know. We all know how to use these. I mean, we all know how you're supposed to use them, but using them well... Not, not, not me, really. I'm not good at that. Uh, Trojan Princes are an extremely elite arch unit. They have massive range and good damage, even if it isn't all arm piercing. They have good armor, so can take a decent chunk of damage themselves. They can also fire whilst moving, so are good at chasing down their targets. And finally, Trojan Nobles are kind of like Princes, but a little bit worse, which makes sense since you get them earlier, but for some reason they're listed after. I don't know about that. But, you know, they, they are what they are. They're Trojan Princes, a little bit worse, but you unlock them earlier, so they're a little bit cheaper. Fantastic. Now, for the leader himself, Paris, as I mentioned before, he stole Helen away from Menelaus and started the whole Trojan War by doing so. Kind of a stupid move there, but, you know, if, if, if he liked Helen that much and Helen likes him, then, yeah, sure, why not? I'll let it slide. No, Helen does actually quite like Paris, but Menelaus can't accept that, so he's coming for her, so you need to prepare and you need to stop him. Now, in battle, he's a sniper or an archer skirmisher, which means that he is focused on sitting on the back lines and dishing out a ton of damage uh, without really moving around and commanding his army too, too much, but just keep him close enough so that he can, you know, encourage everyone and keep them around as long as he can. This does unfortunately mean that if he gets caught in melee, he is pretty damn useless. He's not awful, you know, he can fight some light units, 
But basically, if he gets into hand-to-hand -hand combat with an enemy lord, chances are he's going to lose it. So don't let that happen. You know, focus on keeping him alive, focus on keeping him firing and on the back lines, and he should be just fine. Now, of course, since he's a legendary hero, he does grant his army some little effects because, you know, why wouldn't he? It increases missile unit accuracy in his own army and reduces the amount of friendly fire. And he also grants minus 5% construction cost to all buildings locally. Now, his objectives in the campaign are to complete his personal mission line. And as I mentioned in the Middle Ace video, these are just the epic missions that pop up. You'll know when you see them they're pretty straightforward i played a couple of them but as i said i only got to play up to turn 40 and i'm pretty bad so i didn't get through too too many but you'll know when you see him he also has to make sure that mycenae ithaca and sparta are all destroyed he has to have at least 210 favor of aphrodite and he also needs to defeat his first antagonistic faction now this campaign was definitely the more challenging of the two that i got to play uh, I mean, it's obvious that the main menu even tells you it's own. The main menu is correct. This is definitely much harder, but I feel like there's also a lot of potential for being a lot better and more powerful when you actually learn to play the character. As I mentioned before, you have all this stuff that's dragging you down. You know, you have to get as much favor as you can. You have to keep Helen happy. You have to keep Paris happy. You've got all these things that are piling down on top of you, but if you can keep on top of all of them, then you're going to be extremely powerful. It's just getting to that point is going to be really difficult. So it's kind of a, you know, high risk where, you know, you've got all this stuff, so it might not go too well. But if you manage to push through, it's super high reward. So I think that's going to be really interesting and very entertaining and enjoyable and rewarding play right there. Now, unlike Menelaus, the early game is full of wars and all of these wars are pretty much right on your doorstep. Whereas Menelaus, he got into a few wars to start off with, but they were miles away, so he could kind of ignore them and take them at his own pace. Whereas Paris, they're on your doorstep, you need to take them out, you need to do something very quickly, otherwise you're going to face the consequences. Uh, I think both of his abilities or faction effects or whatever you want to call them mechanics are very interesting. The thing about moving Helen around, yes, it does cost resources, but it also gains you a lot of things too. So there's a lot of potential there for, yes, I need to spend these resources now, but it's going to do me a lot of benefit in future. Even if you aren't doing amazing with keeping Paris and Helen really happy, just doing these things to move around is going to make a lot of difference and improve your faction in a lot of ways. So that should be very interesting to see. Exactly the same thing with the preamps air. It does kind of give you a lot more direction. So now if you're not really sure what to do, then looking at the preamps air thing, it can kind of give you a good idea. Like, oh, is Hector in a war? Oh, well, I'll go help him with that because it'll gain me some favor. Or if preamps like, oh, well, I want you to take out these guys and build a statue to this date. Then you're like, okay, well, I'll, I'll go do that. That's just fine. It gives you some direction because a lot of Total War games, for me personally, once I get through my initial war, I kind of hit a point where I'm like, I'm not really sure what I want to do here because, you know, no one really attacks you. So you just kind of sat around like waiting for something to happen and it kind of can make the early to mid game go extremely slowly. Whereas this, it should keep the ball rolling and keep you busy. So I enjoy that very much. But yes, I think that is everything I have to say about the Paris campaign. I hope you enjoyed this video and the video on Tuesday about Troy. The, uh, the noobs to the noob god tournament uh, returns on Monday and then Friday and then the final should be the following Monday. So look forward to that. Very exciting stuff indeed. Uh, but yes, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then, you know, be sure to leave a like, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell thing. All that fun stuff helps out me and it helps out you find the content that I hope you want to watch over and, just, you know, scour the YouTube algorithm and have to just type in my name every single time. You know, if you subscribe, you just go onto your front page and boom, it's there. What could be easier? But if you didn't enjoy this video, then you know what to do. You know, leave a comment, you know, say mean things about me and I'll be sure to read them and uh, keep me up at night crying about them forever and ever. It's what I normally do anyway. But yes, I believe that's everything. So for now, I've been your boy, Colonel Damders, and I will see you next time. A goodbye.